Brian here from RV with Tito, and today I want to share with you some troubleshooting and repair tips for your RV hot water heater, specifically the uh, the AC side of the heater. You know, these heaters have more than one way to heat water. Uh, one of them is the propane, which a lot of that stuff's located on the front. The other way is uh, is with uh, 820 volt AC uh, power, which is typically what you'll uh, be using that mode if you're on shore power or running a generator. Now most of that uh, stuff is on the back of the heater so it's going to be a little bit tight to show you but uh, we'll do our best. Now interestingly enough uh, our older uh, motorhome here has a third way of heating up water which I'll uh, share with you. It's really kind of neat. I didn't realize it had this feature when we got it. Now, if you're having an issue with the uh, the propane side of your water heater, uh, I'll link to another video that I made specifically walking through all of that part of the heater, and uh, it'll help you try to figure out what's wrong with that side. But uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the AC side. So we're going to simulate uh, a failure. We're going to figure out you know what's going on when I flick the switch inside, and I just noticed that the heater is not heating up water. All right now, if you're uh, if you're new to the channel, then uh, I should mention that I am not an RV tech. Uh, I just uh, enjoy uh, try to figure out how things work in my RV so I can fix them myself and save a lot of money and just be more self reliant because that's really what this uh, channel is all about. Um, but if you are a tech and you have some insight and uh, things to share, please drop those uh, things in the comment section and we can have a discussion down there and it's going to be really helpful for everybody. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, try to fire up the water heater here on the uh, AC side and uh, we'll trace it from there. Okay, we got power to the switch. We got our little light on here and um, we'll go from there. All right, I have this labeled as outgoing power. Okay, so this is power going out of the switch. Right now it's off. Incoming is okay. So now let's turn it on. Okay, so we've got power going out of the switch, down. Now we can uh, go check to see if uh, we've got power at the heater. Okay, well now we're uh, looking at the back of the heater here. It's a very tight spot, but yeah, we can see a few things. You know, we've got our water line here. There's one up here, there's one on the bottom. And uh, this is our power line. So this is the AC power coming in, and it runs around here and goes into this box here. It's actually just a little cover. Now we can take our little tester and just verify that we have power and looks like we do. So we've got power going into this box and the next thing we can do is um, remove this and I'll show you what's inside. There's a couple of small little 7 16 nuts on there. Now we still have power connected so just keep that in mind. I'm just going to be very careful here. It's just a couple of little bolts holding this on. Oh, this was a little tight. Okay, there we go. So I know you can't see it, but inside here we have uh, we have our typical uh, hotline, neutral, and a ground. And this little cover here, which goes into this here, which is pressed against the back of the heater. Now, uh, we'll take this out and I'll show you uh, how we can test this. But we can put our tester here and we can see that we have, we have power coming in. So in terms of AC power going to the heater, uh, we're good to go. T to show you how this really works, I'm going to take it out and uh, we'll, we'll set it up outside here where we can uh, look at it more closely. 
Now you might wonder what these hoses are here. Now what those hoses are is actually uh, that third way that I mentioned of uh, being able to heat water. Now in this uh, RV, it's uh, the heater's actually uh, tied into the uh, the coolant line to the engine. So as a coolant circulates to the engine, those hoses also go into the heater. Actually, while I'm driving, it heats up the water tank. And yeah, that's really cool. So when we're on a drive, you know, for a day, by the time you get to your destination, you've got a full tank of hot water. So that's a really cool feature. And probably one good reason why I'll probably won't replace this with a Truma or some other like uh, instant hot water heater because I, I really like that feature of uh, having uh, hot water while we drive. You know, it probably has other benefits like um, it probably helps keep the engine cooler because that, uh, that hot antifreeze rolling through there and it's going through the water heater to heat up that cold water. It's got to be cooling that antifreeze down too, which is in turn cooling down the engine. So I think there's some benefits, but it adds a level of complexity for this specific heater. And, uh, but uh, you at least need to know how it works so uh, you don't go disconnecting things and then your engine doesn't run. <laughs> All right, well, here's the uh, little panel that I removed from the back of the, uh, the water heater. And there isn't a whole lot back there besides, uh, you know, where the, the electricity comes in, the AC, 120 volt AC comes in through here. And I'll show you how it flows through here. But uh, ultimately, it goes to power this, um, this heating element. Uh, this isn't the one that's in there. I didn't remove it because it's full of water. Hopefully you don't have to replace this. Uh, in the majority of cases, your problem is going to be here. So let's uh, uh, hook it up. I created this little test setup so we can walk through it. All right, well, here's a little mock-up of what's going on behind the heater. This is the piece we removed, and it's got a couple of uh, thermostat-type... Um, devices there. So let's go ahead and plug this in. This is our incoming power coming in here. We verified that we did have power coming in. And one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, that cover plate that's on top of this actually has a switch on the side. It's You can't really see it, but it's on the uh, opposite side. And uh, if for some reason that got switched to off, that could be the problem that uh, is preventing your heater from working. So make sure that that is on. I'll go ahead and switch it on. I just wired this switch in here. So our power comes in here, goes through the switch. If you have one, it might be a relay on your, um, on your heater. And then it comes out of the switch and uh, goes to the thermostat here. So what we want is it to go through the thermostat and through the second piece, which is the ECO, and I'll explain what those do here in a minute, and then out to power the um, heating element. Let's just imagine for now that this is the heating element, and this is ultimately what we want to power. So if either of these are bad, then that could prevent our flow of electricity through here and uh, prevent the uh, the heating element from um, from turning on. So we could do some voltage checking here, but it's kind of difficult uh, to do on the back of the heater. Really the best approach is to, uh, to turn off all the power. So you disconnect the breaker, turn off the breaker, and then you turn off the switch uh, for your water heater, and then use this to make sure that nothing is powered, and then uh, remove uh, this little panel like I did, and then you can check it with a meter. Make sure we're not energized here. All good. And we can start out by testing the uh, thermostat. Now the thermostat is typically set to 140 degrees or so. So it's gonna disconnect when the, uh, the water temperature reaches 140 degrees, which is uh, when your water is hot. So it's gonna disconnect, which is normal and uh, not gonna allow any, any uh, power through. Now, if it fails, it's possible it could uh, it could just not work and not disconnect and not connect, and it might be stuck in a uh, 
in an open state, which is essentially disconnected. So that'll prevent power or any current from flowing through this at all. So if that fails, then that's going to be your problem. So we can test that really quick by putting our meter on resistance or continuity. And I like to put mine on this little beep mode. So it just beeps when I know I have a connection. Okay. So now if I attach my lead to one side and to the other side, I got nothing, right? So if I touch here, I got something. Right here, I have no connection. So immediately that tells me that this thermostat is bad. And this is my problem. In case I, <laughs> in fact, I inserted this, I knew it was bad. Uh, I had a bad one, so I, I thought it'd be good for this test. So this is what we're gonna end up replacing. Now we could also go ahead and test uh, the ECO. It's really the same process. Disconnect it here. Now the only difference between these two devices is that this will disconnect. It's more of a safety mechanism to uh, disconnect when it uh, gets to 180 degrees. So it's an unsafe temperature for the, uh, the water heater to be in. So it's going to go ahead and shut down and not allow current to flow and uh, it won't allow the uh, heating element to power up. So the same test. Now this should be Good, so we do the same test here. And we'll just check one side of this and the other side. And we have a good connection through that. So this is a good ECO unit. Oops, they're touching. So a quick test. Now if you didn't have a multimeter and uh, you had no way of testing across these two leads for the thermostat and the ECO to determine if they're bad, one thing you could do is to essentially bypass these all together and then jumper this and this together and see if your heater comes on. Uh, basically, you're just bypassing the temperature controls and uh, that's one way to do it. So uh, you could do that uh, using a fuse like this. Basically, these are gonna be the, uh, yeah, like this. I just use a fuse, just like a 30 amp regular auto fuse and then you could bypass it like this so if we did that if I turn it on then I'll turn on the switch and there we go we've got voltage going through so we bypass it that works and we have it hooked up to here it doesn't work so that tells us that we do have either a bad thermostat or a bad ECO now replacement units typically come in a pack of a uh, you know, thermostat slash ECO together. Uh, this runs about uh, 37 bucks or so, 36 maybe on uh, Amazon. I'll drop a link for my particular heater. Um, and they're pretty easy to swap out. I would recommend, uh, even if you have just the uh, thermostat that went bad, I would just recommend changing them both out because you know, it's just a matter of time. So I'll go ahead and swap those out. You put the spring on there like so from the back and then you insert it through the hole. And then it's got this plastic tab, it kind of locks it in place. So you can fit it over here. And then what you want to do is turn it. So turning it locks it. It's like make sure it's locked in place. So there you go. So now it it's got a little flex to it, but it's not going to pop out. See, so yeah, I'll take our thermostat, put the spring on like that, insert it from the back, and then we'll take this little plastic ring, slide it over that way. It's got the grooves where these uh, little blades are, and then we can turn it like 90 degrees and uh, just needs to be perpendicular to those. And now we can connect that. So now it's set in place. It's gonna compress against the heater and it's not gonna pop out here. And it, it also insulates the, uh, the connections from this uh, plate here, which is gonna be grounded. The uh, 
the one that I removed actually didn't have these uh, springs or this little plastic uh, faceplate here, that locking ring on here. So that could be why uh, it eventually failed. Maybe it uh, got shorted out or something. So these are definitely better. All right, well, it looks like everything is back to normal and we're heating up water. So I hope this helps you out and I'll uh, see you in the next one. So take it easy.